Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here. I'm playing Call of Duty World War II Zombies. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do the fireworks Easter egg, which is for retrieving the artifact and defeating the Panzer Mortar boss. You'll also earn an achievement or trophy for completing this. I would highly recommend four people, and this will take a decent amount of time, clocking in around an hour to an hour and a half. This guide will take you through every step, including the Tesla gun, how to power the right hand of God, the left hand of God, the voice of God. It'll explain how you can pack a punch your weapon, and it'll have all the tips and tricks you need in order to get this done effectively. So go to the village square from the beginning, and you can locate the small little generator, which has three cables coming out from it that are connected to three separate valves. You'll need to go up to these valves and turn them all the way. Getting hit by a zombie will stop your progress, so be safe here. Now, out of the three valves, two of them are found in the village square, but one of them will require you to get a door to go through in order to access. Then return to the village square, and you can now activate the pilot light in the middle, which will clear the sewers with a giant fireball, kill the zombies that come out. After that, you can drop down into that sewer hole and continue up the path in order to activate the power to the village square using this large machine, which will open the gate and connect you back to the center. Next up, you'll want to return to the middle and raise enough funds to open up this large vault door to the command room. Once you open it up, we can go inside, and this is the general area right in the middle. And as soon as you enter, you do want to turn the crank in order to fully open this device. After you've turned the crank, it's now time to raise enough jolts in order to open up the doors to the morgue and the laboratory on the left and right side of the crank if you're facing from the top to the bottom. And you can share your jolts with your partner here by using left on the d-pad to drop some money for them. And I would highly recommend that you have weapons that you're comfortable with as things tend to get a little bit difficult here. Now inside of each one of these rooms is a small fuse box and you'll need to interact with both of them in a limited amount of time. Once you activate the first one, a timer starts and you have to activate the second one before that timer ends. Find one fuse box in the morgue and one fuse box in the laboratory. Afterwards, you can return back to the center area and you'll wanna raise enough funds to now open up the door to the salt mine, which is the main door. That door wasn't available to us until we activated those fuses, however. Go all the way to the bottom of the salt mine in order to find the Emperor's Chamber, and at the very back, you'll see a large machine which you can activate called the Hilt. As you activate it, a red ring will appear around it, and you will have to kill zombies inside of this ring in order to charge it. You can tell that zombies are charging the machine with a large beam of electricity that connects to the machine when they die, and you need to kill roughly 20 or 30 of them to fully power the machine as you can see on screen. Once the machine is fully powered, we can then return to the command room, go to the top of the steps, and interact with the button in order to turn on the transfer device. Now once the transfer device is turned on, you'll see that giant red beam in the middle of the map above where we turned the crank earlier, and it'll either move to the laboratory or the morgue. It seems to be a little bit random, but we have to do it both ways anyways, so there's not really a certain way you're hoping for. For us, it went to the laboratory first. What we need to do is follow that beam of light down the hallway, make sure we're charging it as it's approaching the very end. Once it reaches the very end, a machine will power up. Roughly 20 seconds later, it'll deposit an item for the Tesla gun. And in the laboratory, it is the gun barrel. Now, after you do that, return to the middle area and wait for the device to follow you back. And the device will start going the opposite way from the first time. For us, that would be the morgue. And we're going to rinse and repeat this process, killing zombies inside of the light to charge it until it reaches the very end of the path. In the morgue, once you reach the end of the path, some liquid will drain out and the machine will produce the Tesla gun core. Once you've attained both parts, you can return to the command room, go up the steps and find where you can deposit them not far from the button that activated the transfer device. Once you place both of the parts onto the gun model and the transfer device connects, 
you can hold the button now to pick up the Tesla gun, swapping out the gun that you're currently holding for it. So keep that in mind. As soon as you do that, the achievement or trophy will unlock if it's your first time, and you should be able to pick up the gun and play with it. Now that you have the Tesla gun, go down to the basement and into the Emperor's Chamber and interact with the right hand of God on the left of the room. Now we'll have to activate the power grid to the tower, and to do that I'm going to first show you all four of the boxes you need to see. So there was box number four near the tower by the bar where you can open the gate. And I'm going to go in backwards order so that you guys can kind of work your way backwards by following the cable from the gate. But where Riverside's connects to the sewer, you can find box number three. Where the sewers connect to the morgue, you can find number two. And then in the command room, you can find number one up top of the stairs at the back. Now what you'll need to do is activate the power machine and you'll be getting a grid of all the boxes and the things you'll need to do. So what you need to do is look at the grid here and you can see that power box one needs to be blue, which is going to be position number three. Power box two needs to be green, position two, and all of those have to be done in order with the correct sequence in order to activate power to the tower. Now you can do this solo, but we're doing it with three people. So I did box one, we had someone at box two and three, we had someone at box four. And as soon as we did that, we saw our objective get updated in the top right corner. At this point, I would highly recommend that you guys pack a punch your weapons, and I'll show you that process right here. What you'll need to do is locate all three of the disposal tubes. I'll show you all of them on screen, so don't worry, but here's an example of one. In order to activate them, go down to the sewers, and you'll see a button near the middle. Click that button, and this will open all three of the disposal tubes. One disposal tube I just showed you inside of the command room. It's going to cost 250 jolts in order to use the disposal tube. And as a person comes through the disposal tube, they'll come into a jail cell that will open up and it'll have a button right next to it, which you can click and then that'll be one phase. Now the other disposal tube here is in the laboratory and it's not far from the kind of tube of electrical traps you can go through that disposal tube you end up in the jail cell make sure you click the button as you're doing this additional enemies might be spawning in the sewers so make sure you're taking care of them as you go now the last disposal tube can be found in the tower after getting access to it it's near the back corner so you'll go through it come into the jail cell and click the final button in order to open up the pack-a-punch machine where you can deliver a gun, pay 5,000 jolts, and get a significant upgrade. A bigger clip, it does more damage, it fires faster. It's just going to be a way better gun that you guys will need later on. Well, that's an improvement. So now that we've completed that optional step of activating the Pack-A-Punch machine with our favorite weapons, we highly recommend the Stig 44 as well. But you can now return to the tower and activate the switch kind of right underneath the middle. And you'll be you'll basically get a small defense phase right here you're gonna have to basically complete the wave while defending that middle switch and once you're successful it'll flash the new objective it'll go to the next wave and you'll have to do the same thing but with two more switches one on each side this for this phase you have to actually activate both of them at the same time and defend both of them this part is quite difficult if you're running it solo because the zombies go straight for the boxes but if you are successful um, you'll get a whole jolt of electricity coming from the tower and now that tower is completely powered and you're good to go and move on to the next step which is going down to the emperor's chamber in the salt mine and interacting with that right hand of god in order to fully charge that module now you'll see that there's two more little modules connected to the kind of center machine and for the other one we're going to go to the surface now and we'll see a flying zeppelin and what you want to do is shoot the zeppelin in its lights when they open up they'll be orange or red you'll want to have everyone kind of shooting at the same lights but eventually as you guys shoot the lights it will drop a large machine and you'll see that happen on screen right here you can very noticeably see the uh, battery or this generator falling down from the sky and it won't always fall into the same spot so you sometimes kind of have to look for it and make sure you found out where it dropped now, after it drops, this is a generator. It needs to be powered, and it's powered by the souls of dead zombies. You will have to kill zombies in the red radius in order to fully charge this generator. And once it is fully charged, the generator will turn into a small battery 
that's going to sit on the ground. You'll see it here, although it's a little bit hard to see. It's going to be right there, kind of behind all these enemies. And you can kind of ignore it up until you have not a lot of zombies left. But once you're ready, pick up this uh, battery. And now we're going to take it down to the salt mine and take it into the Emperor's Chamber. Now, once you're moving around with this battery, you move quite slowly. So you might need a little bit of an escort service on your way down here. Now, you'll put that battery in that left hand of God, and you'll have to repeat this process a second time. Go outside, have the generator drop onto the world on the surface, then kill zombies near that generator to power it. Once you power the generator fully, the uh, generator will turn into a battery. Take that battery, bring it downstairs, insert it into the left hand of God, and now it's time to do that whole process a third time. However, there is something kind of special about the third time, which is that once the generator drops, you'll eventually approach that generator, and the generator will actually be lifted back towards the ship on your third time. What you need to do is actually shoot it down again, and then you can kind of proceed. So it'll lift it back up, you'll shoot it back down, and rinse and repeat this process. Find the generator, kill the zombies, charge the generator, which will turn into a battery, and then take that battery down into the Emperor's Chamber to charge the left hand of God. And once you charge the left hand of God, you are almost two-thirds of the way done basically the entire Easter egg. Now, the next step involves a very specific thing, which is a Brenner head. You'll find Brenner heads kind of all over, and they're going to be taken off of enemies that you kill. And you can kind of pick them up and store them for later, or you can just kind of look around and try to find one. But you're going to have to take this Brenner head to four locations, paintings on the map. The first one can be found in the morgue as it connects to the sewer. And you'll notice that on these paintings, there are going to be symbols with a direction and a Roman numeral. There's also going to be a painting inside of the sewers. What you want to do is write down the direction that the eagle is facing as well as the Roman numeral that goes with it. Another painting can be found inside of the pub near the tower. There's going to be a symbol with a directional point as well as a Roman numeral. Write these down or memorize them. Last but not least, our fourth painting can be found in the courtyard. Yet again, a Roman numeral as well as a direction. Write them down or memorize them. Now take this information down to the Emperor's Chamber and use the middle machine to input the values of the Roman numerals and match them with the symbols on this painting. Make sure you're doing this right because you only get one shot, so make sure that the Roman numeral matches the eagle exactly from the same painting. Go all the way around and then go to the front and match the voice of God. I did this in two separate runs, so if you're wondering why there might be some inconsistencies between parts of the video, that's why. But as soon as you do it, have everyone regroup in the Emperor's Chamber, and a hilt will start forming a cloud of orange smoke around it in front of you, and you'll want to have everyone start unloading on this using their Tesla guns. After a little bit of time passes, you should be able to approach this machine and then activate the hilt. Activating the hilt will trigger the Panzer Mortar boss, and you'll even get a small cinematic as follows. Alright, to finish off the fireworks easter egg, we have to take out the Panzer Mortar boss. He's pretty powerful, but you should have one of your team members kind of run him around the map so that he ignores everyone else, and the Zeppelin will return. 
When the Zeppelin returns, you'll have to shoot down yet another generator. You'll have to charge yet another generator. And that generator will produce yet another battery. And then once you get the battery, what you'll need to do is have everyone shoot at the Panzer Mortar boss in order to stun him. It can be very easy to get overrun here, and it can be very easy to take too much damage, have some people go down, lose perks and stuff. So be careful here. But once the Panzer Mortar is downed and stunned, and one person has the battery, they want to approach him from behind on the left, and then aim at his little backpack in order to deposit the battery. And you'll have to do this a total of three times in order to defeat him. So, you saw on screen that was our first round. The Zeppelin comes back. We shoot down a generator. Again, we're going to shoot zombies and kill them until that generator disappears. Zombie management and wave management is very important in this. You want to keep your waves down so it's as easy as possible at the end because it's easy to get overrun by the boss and stuff. And when possible, try to keep one zombie alive as fodder so that you don't have to focus on too many things at once. But again, we got that generator, produced a battery. We stunned the Panzer Mortar by shooting him once we had the battery. And we stunned him or we delivered that battery into his backpack in order to uh, get a final hit on him. Now, the third generator will drop down and it'll be brought back up to the ship. Uh, so you need to do this part a second time just like we did it in the first kind of part of three. We have to do it again in the exact same way. So we shot down the generator twice. We're going to power that generator yet again with some zombies. That generator is going to produce a battery. We're going to pick up that battery. We're going to stun the Panzer Mortar. We're going to deliver that battery to his backpack. And three, third time is a charm. As you do it for the third time, um, he will go down and die for good. And I would highly recommend something like Firestarter here to get him down quickly. But Camouflage also works very well in order to pick up any teammates that go down. And here is how Zombies ends. And that right there is the fireworks Easter egg, the easier of the two Easter eggs in Call of Duty World War II Zombies. Now, we're still figuring out how to do the rest, and I'll try to have a video up for you guys when we figure it out. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if this video was helpful. Share with a friend. Hopefully, this helps out your strats and whatnot. And hopefully, I see you in the next video. Special thanks to the amazing people on Patreon for supporting the show. Peace.